Hello, this is Bakayaro here with another Movecraft video. In this video, I wanted to show some uh, changes that have been made in the Movecraft plugin, some improvements that I've made. Um, so the first thing I want to get to is that there are a bunch of blocks that are now supported that previously were not. So here we have a sim simple mechanism using command blocks around a hopper clock. Previously, hoppers were not supported, and command blocks were not supported either. Uh, so this kind of rudimentary quadcopter thing uh, is meant to indicate that. Another thing is, uh, so you see these two chests side by side. How do you do that? Well, one of them is a regular chest, the other is a trapped chest. Previously, trapped chests were not supported, but now they are. The other thing uh, that was not supported was uh, uh, droppers. So, okay, so here we have, uh, and let me show you just real briefly how this works. So these command blocks are executing world edit commands. They're loading up uh, schematics of the uh, blades uh, as they rotate, and then they paste it. Uh, so that, that's it. Um, now let me command this thing, pilot B test, and we can see that yes, I can move it. Now, okay, full disclosure. If I move this around too much, it'll eventually break. Uh, if you have experience with Movecraft, then you know that redstone mechanisms tend, let's see, if they are active while you are moving, you can have problems. And that's true with this mechanism too. Uh, some of the problems you can have is, so I have this piece of redstone that's hopping, that's going between these hoppers. Well, it might disappear if it happen, if Movecraft happens to move the craft at the exact moment that the Minecraft engine is taking out that piece of redstone and putting it in the next hopper. So you can have problems, but this is just to uh, kind of demonstrate that uh, you, you have some new possibilities now with redstone mechanisms uh, using command blocks and hoppers. Uh, but yes, as I say, uh, best practice would be don't have them on or operating while the craft is moving. All right, the next thing I want to get to is world guard integration. So here we have a, a little fighter, <clears throat> and over here is the uh, Temple of Remembrance, and if I walk in here, you can see that, okay, this is the uh, Temple of Remembrance, blah, 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 but, oh, whoops, okay. <laughs> so I'm currently the OP, so I can place blocks there, but uh, let me DOP myself. Okay, now I should not be able to. There we go. Yes, yeah, so it says, you don't have permission for this area. Um, over here, I still can. But over there, I cannot. Now, you'll note, if I get in that fighter, and I just go forward, eventually it says, eh, translation failed. Player is not permitted to build in this World Guard region. So, uh, so yes, you can now protect areas so that um, if you make it so that players cannot, so any player that cannot build in an area also cannot fly an airship in that area. Uh, so if you have a town or something and you want to protect it, make it a world guard region, make it so that people cannot uh, uh, build in that area and then those people will not be able to fly airships in that area either. Uh, be and you do that to prevent griefing, right? Because someone could fly their uh, airship into a building or something like that and just leave it there. All right, uh, another thing I want to show you is uh, the man overboard feature. So a problem that has been plaguing Movecraft for a long time is that occasionally people will fall out of their uh, uh, airships. Usually it's because they did something stupid, like they stand up right here, you know, while they're moving around, they stand right on the tip, or you know, they stand somewhere they shouldn't, and of course, yeah, that's going to make you fall off. Um, so, if I just fall off right here, you see I get a message. You have left the craft. If you accidentally fell out of the craft, you can type slash man overboard in the next 30 seconds to be returned to it. And sure enough, I type man overboard. Yeah, hey, I go right back up to the ship. So if I had been cruising around and I fell out of my airship, I could just type that and get back on. Now that uh, that functionality, uh, it's pretty powerful. Uh, you can, if you were flying an aircraft in the nether uh, and died, it works across worlds. So you could go right back to the nether, right back to your uh, ship. Um, because it's very powerful, I also give you the ability to control whether, or basically to control it, or disable it entirely. So if you look at your plugin.yml, 
if you uh, delete that and then allow the plugin to recreate it, you'll see a bunch of new options in there. All right, so here's myconfig.yml, uh, and you can see those new options. We have man overboard timeout. That's set to 30, and it's measured in seconds. Uh, I have also extended how long it takes to release a craft to 30 seconds, because you cannot teleport back to a craft that has been released. So if you set this to 60, uh, it will only be helpful to passengers, not pilots. Because if you're a passenger on a ship and you fall out, the ship will not necessarily release itself. Um, I, I hope that makes sense, but yeah, so you can set this to zero. If you don't want people to have this functionality at all, you can leave it at 30, which basically gives them until the craft is released to type in that command and get back to the craft. Um, obviously this is something that could be abused. Uh, you could use it to rapidly teleport back and forth between places, so that's no good. Uh, so yeah, put some thought into what you're going to put there. Uh, and then here's another new setting. World Guard Block Move on Build Perm. Yeah, okay, I know it's long, but uh, basically what that's saying is if this is set to true and World Guard is loaded, then it will not allow you to move an airship that the pilot cannot build in. Then there's this other, other setting. World Guard Block Sync on PvP Perm. Let me show you uh, what that does. So, I'm going to teleport myself. Hopefully I remember the coordinates. Oh, I don't have access to this command because I am not an OP. But I am now. Yes, okay, here we are. So here's South Haven, right? Uh, now, if I... So in this case, I have build permissions in this city. But if I didn't, let's say you want it so that people can't screw up, oh, say, that marketplace over there. So you make a World Guard region that covers this marketplace, uh, and you don't give people build permissions there. But maybe you do want them to be able to fly over the marketplace, right? Because, you know, you don't want people to hit this invisible wall every time they're flying over there. But that represents a problem. Because what if a griefer uh, wants to screw up your marketplace, so he flies his airship over the marketplace and then causes it to sink? So you want to prevent that. Uh, so what you do is you set a region above the marketplace, or whatever town you want to protect, that has PvP permissions turned off. And if the plugin sees that you're in a region with PvP permissions turned off, and it uh, would otherwise sink, so you do, you know, I'm going to knock out some blocks so that this thing would sink. It says, okay, player craft should sink, but f PvP is not allowed in this World Guard region. Uh, so, it won't sink. That's the point of all this. Uh, that they will not be able to spread airship parts all over your marketplace and screw things up. Uh, so, so the key is, you want to protect a town, uh, make the whole town a build... You know, let's see. Disable build permissions on the town, and then put a region above the town with PvP disabled, and then they can't sink airships there. Okay. One other thing I want to show you, this kind of cool new feature. Uh, if I... Let me bring up another fighter. I have dozens of these things lying around. Uh, now, uh, a constant problem has in the past has always been that uh, people would get their airships stuck somewhere. Um, so, if you accidentally park your airship next to something that is in the allowed blocks of the airship, you can have, you know, the, the next time you pilot the airship, it won't fly, and you have to clean up the mess, and it's a big pain. So, now, it tells you when that's going to happen. So, here I am next to these wood blocks, which should, uh, which can be part of this fighter. So, if I were to leave this uh, fighter and then take it back over, it wouldn't fly because it would try to merge with these wood blocks. But as you can see, I already got the message. But if I walk off, it says, Warning! There are blocks near your craft that may merge with the craft at... And then it gives you the coordinates. It gives you the last one that it sees. So, if there was ten blocks, as there is here, uh, it is only going to give you the last one. Uh, so, you have to go through... And if you... 
you can remove them one at a time, or what you really do is you go back on, you say, oh, well, okay, but I guess I shouldn't park there, I'll go one over. There. Oh, hey, still giving me the... Oh, because... Let's see. Because of that. Yeah, see, this is how useful this is. So you wouldn't, you, you look at this and you think, well, it's not touching anything, I should be okay. But this trap door is technically adjacent to the craft. So I go one more. There we go, now I'm safe. So you see how that works. So your players can see when there's going to be a problem and they can move their craft and not park there. Okay. Alright, for the last thing I want to show you, we need it to be night. Uh, and I want to show you this underwater. So we're going to go down here. And here we have something you previously should never do. <laughs> a submarine with light sources on it. Uh, so there has always been this problem with light pollution. Which is to say, after you have a move craft craft moving over an area, it will affect the lighting of the area. And then, uh, and, it, and it, let's see, it leaves lit blocks behind it. So I have, I've added a cleanup function uh, that runs and removes all of that. Now, it's not perfect, and it probably needs some more work, but it does basically work. Let me show you. So if I move this thing, uh, let me just move along. Uh, in fact, let's cruise. Okay. That should be far enough. And I look behind myself. You can see, oh, hey, there's uh, light sources all over. Uh, except if I log out and then I log back in, I see that it has been cleaned up. Uh, so basically, the, uh, the, the cleanup function runs and it cleans up the blocks, but it does not resend the chunk with the cleaned up uh, blocks. But they have been fixed on the server, so if I were to you know, go somewhere else and then come back, I would see that it had been fixed. Uh, that's probably going to have to do for now. I might add some more functionality later. Um, it's uh, yeah. There's some there's some reasons why I don't resend those chunks. It would cause other problems, which I don't want to deal with right now. But as I say, uh, I may improve that later. But at least at this point, on the server side, it has been cleaned up. One other thing I want to mention, and that is uh, lighting. So okay, so I've been able to make some major improvements to the lighting for compatibility mode. So that if you're in an airship flying around in compatibility mode, the lighting stays correct. But I can't get that to work in native mode. So what that means is, unless you really need the additional performance of native mode, I would suggest that you use compatibility, mo compatibility mode for now, just so that you get the correct lighting. Uh, well, that's about all I have, uh, so let me know if you have any questions, and if this has been helpful, then please subscribe or like the video, uh, and I will see you next time.